the chemistry of materials. Janice and her father walked into the cell phone store. It was time to buy new phones. As they headed for the long row of the latest models, she noticed a sign. Go green. Turn in your old phone and get 15% off a new phone. Wow, she thought. I have my old phone, so I can turn it in for recycling. That's an easy 15% discount. They continue along the row of phones. The signs for one group displayed a logo with three green arrows and a triangle. It reminded Janice of the recycling symbol on the bottoms of plastic bottles. She noticed that the three phones with this symbol were cheaper than the other phones with similar features. I wonder why these are cheaper, she asked. Just then the salesperson came by. Janice asked, excuse me, could you please tell me what this green symbol means? Well, if a phone carries a green label, it fits green criteria, the salesperson said. That means that its materials or the way it was manufactured are less harmful to the environment than a standard phone. The green phones are so much cheaper than the others, Janice said in amazement. Yes, isn't it great? The government offers lower taxes to electronic companies that meet green standards. They can sell their products for less. Wow, thought Janice. Not only do I need to choose a phone, but I have to think about the environment too. The scenario you just read and listened to does not yet, yet exist. When we buy a cell phone, there is no label that describes how much waste, some of it toxic, was created in manufacturing the phone. But should there be? When you buy a new product, do you think about what materials it is made of, how it was manufactured, what will happen to it when you no longer have a use for it? In this unit, you will consider these questions as you investigate the chemistry of materials. With this information, you will be able to analyze the environmental impact of a product and decide which products to purchase. Consider the world around you, the book in your hands, the floor underneath your feet. Each is made from a type of material. The word material can have several meanings. To a scientist, a material is a type of solid matter used to make things. For example, clothing, homes, and computers are all made from different materials. Material scientists and materials engineers study materials and design new ones. When they, de when they design these materials, some of the things they think about are, how will they be used? What resources are needed to make them? What will happen to them when they are no longer useful? For example, think about the materials that can be used to make containers for drinks. Until 1947, almost all drink containers in the United States were made of glass. Consumers could return glass milk and soft drink bottles and have their deposits paid back, and the drink bottling companies would clean and refill the bottles to sell again. Today, most drink containers are made, moly, made mainly of aluminum, plastic, or glass. Each material has particular characteristics or properties that make it useful for holding drinks. Each material is made from specific resources and has a set of effects on the environment when it's discarded or recycled. You are a material scientist working for a bottling company. The president of the company has asked you which type of material to use to make containers for a new drink brand. You decide to look for a material that will both work well and have the fewest bad effects on the environment. Should it be aluminum, glass, or plastic? How will you decide? What evidence will you use? So the challenge is, which is the best material for making a drink container?